Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. In this sketch, we'll review fetal heart tracings, also called FHTs. You'll see these tracings everywhere on labor and delivery because they drive a lot of management decisions. In this sketch, we'll describe both the components of fetal heart tracings as well as how to interpret them. Ooh, it looks like music class is starting. Since this is one of the most important topics to understand within obstetrics, I think we should probably pay attention. We are symbolizing fetal heart tracings as the O2 opus because these tracings reflect fetal oxygenation status. Any prolonged period of hypoxia could cause major ischemia-induced injury in the fetus, as it would in an adult. If and when evidence of prolonged fetal hypoxia exists, this is an indication to deliver the fetus because it's no longer getting an adequate supply of oxygen in the uterus. In terms of the instruments used for monitoring, there are two types, external and internal. You'll most likely see external monitoring, which looks like a belt that lays over mom's belly with a Doppler ultrasound attached that picks up the fetal heart rate. Hey look, our music teacher is wearing one just like it. Internal monitoring is a fetal scalp electrode that's attached to the baby's scalp and picks up the heart rate this way, which we'll remind you of with this microphone near our music teacher's scalp. Now that we've established that fetal heart tracings reflect fetal oxygenation status, let's delve a little deeper into the pathophysiology behind fetal hypoxemia. Hypoxemia means low blood oxygen levels, symbolized by this kid who's turning blue from not taking enough breaths while playing the recorder. This in turn causes low tissue oxygen levels, symbolized by this blue tissue box underneath his outstretched arm, which helps you remember that hypoxia comes after hypoxemia. If the fetus is in a hypoxic state, this often causes a metabolic acidosis, which is eventually reflected by metabolic acidemia, or low blood pH, symbolized by this acidic pink lemonade. The exact blood pH is a very important number to know, as it shows you exactly how acidemic the fetus was right before delivery. You get the blood pH from the umbilical artery, which we've symbolized with this umbilical cord straw coming out of the acidic pink lemonade. The umbilical artery pH is so important because metabolic acidemia is a necessary precursor to intrapartum hypoxic neurological injury, symbolized by this brain hat flying off the hypoxic recorder player. Hypoxic injury can cause disorders such as cerebral palsy, which is what all this monitoring is trying to avoid. So how exactly do fetal heart tracings help us? Well, there are a few features in an FHT that reliably exclude fetal metabolic acidemia, which means the baby's oxygenation status is A-OK. -okay. These features are moderate variability and accelerations. Don't worry, we'll go over what these mean in a little bit. So if there are only two things that we can really count on in all of this, why are there so many components of an FHT? As we go over the structure of a tracing, you'll see that there are certain components that are like a green light. They say to keep on going with labor. Other combinations are big red lights. They mean stop and deliver. And most fall somewhere in between, like a yellow light. Eventually you will go or stop, but it requires a bit more consideration. So let's start by breaking down each component individually. There are five components of a fetal heart tracing that you should know how to read and interpret. They are baseline, variability, accelerations, decelerations, and the contraction pattern. We'll go over each component in more detail, but remember that when you're reading a fetal heart tracing, you should report on all five components every single time, usually in this exact order. The first component of the FHT to assess is the baseline, which we'll symbolize as the base section. The baseline is the average fetal heart rate over 10 minutes. When you get a fetal heart rate strip, try to find the horizontal line that looks like the average of the entire squiggle that holds for at least 10 minutes. The baseline is always the first thing you assess because it's the number that you will determine all accelerations and decelerations from. A normal baseline is between 110 and 160 BPM, which we'll symbolize with this middle bass and its sheet music whose tempo is also 110 to 160 beats per minute. 
Fetal tachycardia, symbolized by this frazzled bass player on the right playing fast music, is anything greater than 160 beats per minute. Again, just like it's noted on her sheet music. 